You want a drink already? Well, I was going to, yeah, I thought maybe a drink might be in order, but uh, plastic surgery, or was it painful surgery? Painful oh, that's surgery, right. yes. I actually wanted to have plastic surgery. I want to knock about four inches off my nose, but um, <laughs> that may come later. Well, the aristocratic hooter. I should leave it as it is. Yeah, yes. The Haver's name has been very much in the news lately, hasn't it? Uh, how, yes. how, how is your father? He's he's fine. He's just he's fine actually. He about eighteen months ago he went and had uh, a twelve thousand mile service. You know, he had new spark plugs and uh, change of oil. <laughs> and uh, you know, these things take a bit of time to uh, sort themselves out. But he's. But he's okay now. He's very well rested. In fact, the other day I, I was walking down the street. I didn't know he was going to take some time off, and I just saw a, a poster in one of those evening paper billboards. It said, "Havers must rest." Now, you know, as an actor, <laughs> I spent my whole time trying not to rest. You know, really. I thought that was kind of ironic, really. Yes. I kept it anyway. I suppose being the Attorney General's son at a time like this, particularly, must be rather difficult. Um, I know, I don't think it is. I think Dad loves the publicity <laughs> almost as much as I do. No, no, no. <laughs> no, no he's, um, he's, 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 he's been involved politically quite, uh, quite a lot recently, you could say. Mm. And uh, I, I'm being non-political, you know, actor. I'm not intelligent enough to be political. <laughs> and um, uh, I mean, the other day, in fact, I was on... Um, can I mention Breakfast TV? Yes, that's fine. TV AM. Oh, you can mention that one. Yes, yes that's good. And they said they, uh, they were... I was there with Melvin Bragg, and uh, he was talking about... Uh, television in general, and uh, they, the, the people interviewing us said, well, it's been a bit of a week for, for television, what with the, the BBC being raided uh, up in Glasgow, and um, also the Director General resigning, and then Melvin spoke at length about the BBC and thought it was a good idea to raid the BBC offices, and then uh, they looked at me and said, what do you think? And I said, well, you know, I, I, probably my dad organised the whole thing, so maybe I should shut up. <laughs> and, uh, I don't think it was far from the truth, actually. <laughs> I didn't know that at the time. So it's best that I keep very quiet about politics. Not another word. But ironically, you're, you're involved in a film that, uh, that is to do with, with, with secrets. Yes, yes, I am. I, it's a film called The Whistleblower, about Cheltenham GCHQ, and uh, I have a, a lovely part in it, playing uh, this guy who works as an interpreter and a linguist at Cheltenham, a Russian specialist. And um, it's kind of close to the bone in many ways, and it's politically quite interesting as well. And in fact, my father came to see a, um, a, a preview of it recently and said, when it's uh, shown, when I tell him so he can get out of the country. <laughs> <laughs> so, yes, Your good. dad in the film, I'm told, is Michael Caine. Yes, mm. yes. He said, actually, before we made the film, we had a bit of lunch together in one of his restaurants, you know. He, Mm. He, he loves his food, and so the best thing for him is to buy a restaurant so he can eat cheaply. <laughs> and, um, and we were having a bit of lunch in one of his restaurants, um, and he said, to tell me, Nigel, uh, he said, I, are you going to sort of posh down, or have I got to posh up? <laughs> so, and I couldn't work that one out. I thought, well, I think maybe uh, you're going to have to sort of come up, Michael. I said, oh, right, well, I'll, I'll no trouble, I'll do that. And he didn't make any attempt to do it at all. <laughs> <laughs> he can't, no, no. Just but it doesn't matter, the film works really well like that, some, mm. for some strange reason. Ah, oh, it's the talent, it's the talent. Now, Australia is all the rage these days. I mean, the cricket, thank goodness, that was wonderful, and America's Cup and, uh, and various movies coming out of there. And everyone talks about Sydney as being the sophisticated place. Now, you've been working in Australia. Yes, I, I went and made a film out there, um, which was great. I mean, it was a wonderful story, a true story of, about two fellows called Burke and Wills, who were the first people ever to walk right across the continent. Why they bothered to do that, you may well ask. The last ones too, I suspect. They were the last ones, and the first, too, ever mm. to walk across the central part. That's, the, that's another story. But they told me when I arrived, they said, there's no trouble, Nigel, because we'll be filming you know, around Sydney, so you'll be very comfortable. No trouble. So when I arrived there, that was fine. They said, by the way, we're going to film a little, bit, a little bit outside Sydney, but not too far from a hotel. And a week or two went by and I said, this hotel, it doesn't exist, I have to be honest with you. <laughs> the nearest hotel will be a thousand miles away. <laughs> and I said, well, where are we? He said, we're in the middle of nowhere. And that's where they plonked us down. And in these little aeroplanes, they took us out there. It took two flying days to get there. They built this runway. And I got off the plane and I said, I'll kill my agent when I got off. <laughs> and they had to check every plane that I wasn't on the, any one game back. <laughs> every week they had to check. When my parents lived uh, out in the bush years ago, uh, they were described being English as, as new chums, which is quite a nice mm. word. Then all that became pommy bastard, didn't it? Oh, yes. <laughs> how, how, how well received were you? Yeah, I was, it was a bit dodgy to begin with. In fact, the only award I've ever been given as an actor I got in Australia, and it's the best pommy bastard award. <laughs> <laughs> it's a huge statue, which is made up with my name on it. I'm very proud of that. Well, what did the statue show? 
So is a bloke sort of standing there like this. <laughs> dropping like that. Of course, they can't take us. Um, I mean, it's been a dodgy time for them and a great time for us out there, isn't it? Because yes. when we, the Grand Slam and all that. And in fact, we played, when I was filming, we used to play cricket out in the desert, in the sand on Sundays on our day off. And uh, there was one day when I was top scorer on my side. I don't know how I made it, but I did. And they still wouldn't forgive me for that, even though all the other guys on my side were Australian. But the fact that I got top score was a real pain in the neck for me. Pummy them. bastard. I was a pummy bastard. <laughs> what about your famous socks? How did they go down? Well, you see, oh, socks, yes, the socks. <laughs> now, you see, if you wear pink socks in Australia, you're in big <laughs> I think we've got a few Australians in the audience. Yeah, because I, I was there on a promotional tour once, and I, I kicked off on day one, and they said, oh, Nigel, that's great, isn't it? And they suddenly clocked the socks, and they said, oh, Jesus, man, you can't do that. You've got to change the socks. And I said, well, why, what's, what's tomorrow? And they said, well, uh, you know, men don't wear socks like that. <laughs> well, there was a time when... So I went round like this all day. <laughs> I mean, once upon a time, suede shoes were only worn by consenting adults in private. That's <laughs> <laughs> I think we're wearing very butch black leather shoes here. Oh, yes, yeah, and very hairy black socks in my <laughs> case. <laughs> You, you don't wear any pink socks, then. You don't go in for that. Well, I wore some light blue a few weeks ago, and people said, don't do that, Aspel. It's not you. That was my wife. Anyway, <laughs> all, all, that, uh, all that suffering you, you've been through, don't you ever feel that you, you should have followed your family tradition and, and stuck to law? Well... I was just never... My brother did that for me, bless him. He did all the right things, and uh, um, so I had a way out. And I always wanted to be an actor since I was about five, and my parents would take me to the cinema and the theatre. So it seemed to me a natural thing to do. I was surprised that not everyone else wanted to be an actor. The funny thing about my job is, though, because if you're filming, the best part about filming is the day you get the job. See, that when the Asian Wings up, got the job, you could have a couple of pints, or a few more, and celebrate. See? <laughs> Next day one. Then day two, you think, well, I got the job, that's fine. You know, day three, day four, well, it's all a bit boring now because we've got the job. And then, <laughs> you know, then it sort of goes on, and then, you know, then you, they start saying to you, right, you know, wardrobe and costume fittings, and then they start saying, yes, you've got to lose a lot of weight, you know, look at you, come on. And then your clothes, and they just start distressing the clothes, and then you get to make the film, and they make your hair all dark, and they stick things in your face, and you can't allow to eat, and then you go through the heat. And, then it, and it's murder to make the film. Mm. And it's, everyone gets ratty and the money runs out and they are... And, uh, and then the film's all over and you say goodbye. And, you, and, uh, <laughs> and then three months later, you all meet up at the premiere and it's, how was the film? Oh, it was great. <laughs> 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 well, it's, it's like making a film. Thank you. Yeah. You've been working with children a lot recently and with the Little Princess series. Uh, has that dented the perfect gentleman image, or...? No, no, no. I, was, I behaved impeccably, mm. unlike some people. We had a swear box on the set of Little Princess, and it was 50p every time any of the adults swore, which I thought was a little steep. Mm. But, however, I didn't swear too much. Uh, and if Miriam Margulies is watching, she owes the swear box £10,000. <laughs> <laughs> Send me a cheque, I'll... Uh, I suppose it's more fun being nasty more than charming, though, isn't it? Have you had a chance to be nasty? Yes, I've had a chance. I've just finished something uh, with, with this wonderful company, London Weekend. Um, and I must admit, I've enjoyed myself so much doing it. It's a, it's, um, a series of six-hour episodes called The Charmer. And I'm playing um, The Charmer. He's <laughs> <laughs> so awful, this guy. He's so awful and evil sometimes that uh, when I saw some of the things played back, I was terrified myself. I mean, I was what form terrified. does his evil take? Well, he's a bit... He, he cons women um, and does things to women and then gets money out of them. <laughs> That's how he exists. He's an extraordinary character. I had some wonderful bits with uh, Fiona Fullerton. I, um, he's, got, he's got a rather quirky sexuality about him. He likes to tie women up. <laughs> <laughs> and I had to tie Fiona. I wonder if I could... You know those, you know those sofas that have those, those sort of knobs at the end? No, yes. And I, I sort of had to tie Fiona up, and she was sort of strung up at the back like this. And I was doing my dirty deeds on her. And um, <laughs> we, we cut the shot. And Alan Gibson, this wonderful director, came down. And we discussed the shot. And there was Fiona still stuck up here. <laughs> and I, we said, oh, I don't know if I can do that. And I heard this, can somebody help me, please? <laughs> She's been there for 20 minutes, poor darling. She's a game girl. Yes. <laughs> You've sold that very well. It's going to get a yeah. huge audience. Do you know, I've never actually said this to anybody, very rarely in real life, and certainly never on television, but, Nigel, 
Your flies are undone. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, thought, I thought he was going to say, Nigel, I love you. <laughs> that was my next remark. <laughs> Thank you very much, <laughs> Nigel Haber. Thank you. For an awful moment, I thought you were going to say, so are yours. No. <laughs> you didn't plan that, of course, you know. <laughs>